2.40 to go in this first half. We have three timeouts. So does Tennessee. Blitz coming. It's picked up initially. Boyd has time. Fires it downfield. He finds Overton. And he is gone. Touchdown, Carolina. What a throw. Right over the top of the defender. And Overton making big plays today. His second touchdown. And this is why I wanted to put him as the number two receiver. What is up, everybody? Welcome back to the Panthers franchise. Today, we are coming off of that crazy overtime win against the Saints. Uh, still one of the craziest games that I've I've seen just with the way that that fourth quarter ended was, was crazy. I'm not sure if I want to play this one. I don't know yet. Let's, let's take a look at the schedule here. So this is what we have left on the schedule. We have the Rams, the Titans, the Saints, Cardinals, Jets, Falcons, and Seahawks. Um, I feel like I want to see one of these next few games. I'm not sure if it's Rams or Titans that I want to see, but then I want to get us past the Saints in week, week 14 and maybe get us to like week 15 area. So I feel like at the end of this video, I would like us to be at week 15 just because I, I feel like this team needs a little bit of work yet, but we're we're gonna watch one of these next two games, Rams or Titans. Um, I think we might do the Titans. Yeah, I think that's gonna be the best course of action here. Um, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do the weekly strategy. We're gonna get past this week, and then week 13, we'll get to pick focus players. And then before we get to the Titans game, we're gonna go over the draft prospects and just sort of see who's out there, what kind of positioning we can be looking at and who we should be looking at once we get to the end of the season and then we'll we'll get into the Titans game. Okay, so the sim ended up in our favor. We ended up winning 28 to 14. Let's take a look and see what the stats show. Deion Boyd having a much better day. 131.4 rating, two touchdowns, no interceptions, 15 of 22. Matthew Stafford had a rough day, two interceptions, so we'll get to see who got some of those picks. Theo Judge filling in for the injured Jerome Ford, who's filling in for the injured Jonathan Brooks, had 17 carries for 69 yards, averaging just over four yards a carry and a touchdown as well. I believe that is his first touchdown. No, no, he's had one before. I'm a liar. Um, Kyron Williams having a pretty decent day, even though it wasn't a lot of yardage or a lot of attempts, 11 carries, 55 yards. Cooper Cup, 10 catches, 117 yards. Donovan Peoples-Jones coming onto the scene, seven for 116 and both of the touchdowns that Boyd threw. Deron Overton also still having a pretty solid game, five for 73, love to see it. And then going over to the defensive side of the ball, we had Trevin Wallace leading us in tackles. We had three sacks from Jadavian Clowney, two from DJ Wanham, and one apiece from Trevin Wallace, Draymond Jones, and Derek Brown. We got after Matthew Stafford a lot. Wow. Okay, and then the two picks were both from Shaq Thompson. Interesting stats to see. Um... No safeties, any touchdowns, no. Okay, so, oh, here's the last touchdown. Devon Kirkland ended up with the last touchdown. Two carries, five yards, one of them going for a touchdown. So what does that mean for us in the division? It means that we are still in third place, but we are tied with the Buccaneers at six and five in one game behind Atlanta, who we will see again later on this, this season. That will probably be a game that we have to watch. But as for this week, we are in week 13, which means we can do our focus players. And we are going to do those now. Let's see, who do we want to know more about? We're gonna go down to positions. The favorites here that we have, we do have a few. Okay, so uh, some good information right now on some safeties. Um, Garrett Bush, we know he's gonna get to 100% because they are defensive ends. So I don't think we should waste our time on any defensive ends. We could look at some other players that we didn't get a chance to. Yeah, that, I think that's what we're going to do. So we have sort of a weird situation going on right now with the team. We don't know what's going on with the halfback position going forward. Will Brooks be able to return to form? We also need some answers at tight end because we don't know what's going to happen with Dalvin Ridley. So I'm wondering if we may want to stick one or two of these scouting players into the tight end room and try to find one that makes sense for us to look into. Raheem Harrison, 6'4", 274. But a lot of these are day three guys. We do know that Zach Bingham here has B awareness, B spectacular catch, 
uh, C run block power, which I'm not too concerned with. B impact. Uh, we don't know anything else about him. Let's see. Elite to great strength, but really not a lot of stuff unlocked so far. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. It's tough sometimes with these players that you're not 100% sure on. Because you want to, of course, learn more about them. But you also don't want to put yourself in a bad spot. I am wondering if we want to look at maybe a lineman here. We know defensive ends will be good. Actually, you know what? Now that I think about it, I think we should possibly do D tackles. There was a couple of guys that we were looking at that could end up being pretty good for us. Depending on if they would fit our mold. Okay, so I was looking through all of these players, right? And a lot of them are sort of the same build as Derek Brown, or they're a little bit smaller. Derek Brown is really good at rushing the passer. And I'm sitting here like, just wondering like who, who, who I could look at. And there's one guy that sticks out to me and it, it's for sort of a good reason. This dude is 355 pounds out of Georgia, Steven Briggs. I, I want to check him out a little bit here. 6'4", 355. I mean, that guy is a nose tackle through and through. And that, I mean, I don't know, man. I mean, yes, his, he's, <laughs> his physicals aren't going to be very good, but he's got elite to great strength. We have 60% scouted on him. He has A, play recognition, A, tackle, B, block shedding, C, power move, C, finesse, C, hit power, Impact blocking could be good, or at, le at the very least, it's it's average, and his injury is an A to C. I feel like he should be one that we, we put through this, this test here, because this guy, I mean, what better pairing with Derek Brown, who's a guy who is just versatile no matter where you put him, than putting this big of a dude on the line to help with the run defense and help plugging holes in the middle. We don't have one of those guys. Out of all the defensive tackles we have, most of them are converted defensive ends. So we really don't have, outside of Derek Brown, like a true defensive tackle to really give us that that beef up front that's going to help us in the in the run game and our base defense. I think I want to do Steven Briggs as one of the guys that we're going to look at. So if we decide to go with Steven Briggs as one of them, and plus with him being a day three guy, that gives us options down the line. Um, one thing to keep in mind, we are going to have full unlock on all defensive ends. So that will come in handy later. Uh, we are also going to have full unlock on safeties in the central region. So we'll have full unlocks on all of these guys here. This, all this list and this list. And there's a lot of good safeties here, which I'm, I'm really happy for because that's something that I feel like I messed up on in the past in my other franchises and just, you know, not really paying attention to safeties. And I think this year they're actually more helpful than they have been in Madden's past when it comes to the CPU play. So I am looking forward to learning about these guys, especially Lance Dillon and Alex Smith, both of them being 6'2". I want a taller guy in the backfield, but even Kai Kramer, uh, Jason Barkley, all of these guys are six footer above. And then at free safeties, we do have a few smaller guys, but Antoine Cook, 5'11", 214, he's not too too bad. Vince Ingram, he is, I don't know. I mean, if, if he's that good and he's there, I mean, obviously I'm not gonna say no, but he doesn't exactly fit what I'm exactly looking for in a safety. But sometimes those are the guys that end up being the best for you, right? So we also have Devontae Hardison, 6'3", 208, day three prospect. Doug Lawrence, 6'2", uh, 206. So there are plenty of options here at safety, so we don't have to put our focus there. Um, we could put some focus on the corners, but I don't know how important they are right now. But right? we have... We have Horn, we have Stevens, who I think is going to be with us for quite some time, and we have Battle, and we have Shaw Smith-Wade, who I think has been playing really, really good. So I feel like we have a good nucleus right now at the corner position, and I don't feel like we necessarily need to focus too much on these guys at all. So if we're still looking for defense, where we could try to find some players is the outside linebackers and the inside linebacker position. Now there's a couple of even middle linebackers that are jumping off the page to me just because of the some of their uh, their ratings. And I know it's not something we definitely need, but I mean, sometimes you just gotta find players, right? Like Elijah Wheaton here, he's a round three to four guy. He's got A awareness. 6'3", 242, field general. He doesn't have the best physicals, but he has elite to great jumping. He has great to good speed. So nothing too bad there but he has a awareness a catching a hit power 
and C play recognition. Those are some really good statistics, especially for somebody in the later parts of the draft. Another one that I saw here was Perry Barnett. He Now he is the top linebacker. So chances are we probably wouldn't even have a chance at him if we wanted to. Uh, unless I'm going to go middle linebackers, our top pick, which I don't think should be a priority. I would rather see it go towards like a safety if there's one of those available that end up being good. But Perry Barnett, elite to great speed, good to solid, good to solid, good to solid. So he's, he's pretty decent in physicals, nothing too extravagant. And his skills say that he is very good. I mean, A play rec, A zone, B pursuit. And then look at all the A to C's we have in awareness, man coverage, tackling, and stamina. His injury is of concern at C to F. So it, it's it's one of those things that now with Ridley being, you know, on the sideline a lot, it does have me concerned. But 21 years old, field general, middle linebacker. It's somebody I gotta I gotta keep in the back pocket here just in case something falls through. 19th rank, so he would probably be somewhere in our territory, depending on how the rest of the season goes. It seems that most of the time we're in that mid. You know, somewhere between 10 and 20. We're not that bad. We're not that good. Uh, Mike Cook as well. I, Mike Cook here, I have him on the favors for a reason. 6'3", 237. He's 21 as well. Um, he doesn't have as good of physicals, but they're not as... They're, they're not too far off of that of Barnett. And then skills-wise, we don't have much unlocked from him, but we do know that he's got Bs in block shedding and pursuit, along with A in play recognition and C in a tackle. So... He also has some pretty good statistics behind him. And he would also give us a different option down the line in a rounds two to three type of situation. So there is plenty of optimism. I think I'm gonna go ahead and add these guys. Oh, I can't in this, cause this is the player selection. So I'll do it after. But I wanna add Barnett and uh, Wheaton to the favorites list for now. And then looking at the outside linebackers, Darius Cummings is somebody that is a round one. How early he goes is going to be up to you know where the I, I have to see the mock draft to see but some of his physicals aren't the best but if he is more so intended as an edge rusher then that's really not going to affect too much he's got a play rec a pursuit b block shedding though i feel like darius cummings could also be a guy but he is six i don't think he's even going to be in the realm of possibility for us um donovan hood this guy is more of a run stopper so he's not exactly going to be what we're looking for either and then over on the other side, there are a couple of speed rushers. Telvin Collins here, 6'2", 256. He's 22. Sort of like Barnett, where he's got one really good straight uh, trait with speed, but everything else is sort of middle of the road. Maybe maybe a few of them above average. And he's got uh, B pursuit, C play rec, B tackle, D power move. So with him being a finesse rusher or a speed rusher, I'm assuming his finesse move is going to be the higher of the two. So if we know power moves is D, which means we should be ex at least expecting him to have a C or better in that department, which would make him a, a solid option. Now, is it a, worth a top five pick? I don't know. Chances are we won't even be able to find out if he would land to us anyway. But there are other options. Danny Russell here, 6'6", 253. He's more of a build that we would probably be looking for given our situation. Again, the physicals, if he's going down on the line, those are also with off-ball linebackers, so I'm not too concerned there. And most of the stuff we have unlocked is stuff more intended for an actual linebacker. The only thing we know is his finesse moves is a C. Now, to me, that doesn't make much sense to draft somebody that high in the round one if they don't even have a, an A or a B in one of their most important categories. So maybe we don't look that route. Maybe we have to go a little bit later for some of these guys. We do have Alex McNair down here on the favorites list. Um, there might be a few others that I end up finding. I'm hoping we can find more guys from this once we have them all unlocked. We're getting really close to that. So I'm just sort of gonna hold off on going through these guys in depth until we have them fully scouted and we know what their talent is. Same with the safeties. And if we don't like what we see with the safeties, we do have an opportunity later in the season to add more to the, the scouting list. So for right now, I'm feeling like I want to go with Steven Briggs as one of the one of our, our choices here, day three prospect. I definitely want to add him. I feel like we should add a lineman because we do need linemen. We need a right tackle really badly. So we might actually have to go right tackle right or left tackle earlier on than I anticipated. We know Cameron Wilson is 
was on the list of guys that were impressive, but he's also a day three guy. So that's going to be sort of a, a I don't know if I want to waste a, a scouting on him. I'd rather do it on an earlier round guy so that we know we're getting some quality players. I would love for us to land the top right tackle in Alex Jones. I mean, he's got A in awareness, but I just don't know if that's going to be something that is possible. We could, however, look at somebody later on, like, I don't know, like maybe Greg Cash to rounds two to three. There's really just a nucleus of, of these five guys up here that are probably going to be what we want to look at because then it drops off to day three. Or we also have the option of looking at an inward, right? For an interior lineman, maybe that can bounce outside. You know, like look at Spencer Weatherford here. He's 6'4", 309, pass protector. He might fit better in a tackle situation than he does at guard. He's 21, which is already a plus for me. He's got... I would say pretty good physical ratings strength you'd like to see a little bit better at but that also indicates to me that he might be better off with the more finesse rushers which is what we need at the tackle position his d block is not very good his run block finesse is horrible but his pass block finesse is an a so there is something there and he's a round three to four project which means we wouldn't have to devote a very early pick to him either Dylan Borum here is definitely a through and through interior lineman. And that's not even something that's against like, I'm actually sort of for it at this point because our line needs some help interior wise. And I don't know if we're gonna be able to fix it through free agency. B, pat, uh, B lead block, B run block power, D run block finesse. So this guy's gonna be power all the way through. I'm not sure if I want to go down that route or if I want somebody a little bit more balanced. Um, we know Weatherford probably going to be a guy that we want at tackle if you were to go his route. Um, centers here, Caleb Neal. It gets a little difficult with centers because sometimes they can go outside and play guard, but I don't find too many of them that can transition to tackle. Robert Wilcox here, he is listed as a guard, but he's a little too short to play tackle. Dan Holland also, Darnell Thomas. Oh, yeah. Let's look here at the left tackles. Jason Robbins, round one. He's projected seventh. So these two guys are going to go probably pretty early. Both of them are agile. Sammy Griffin here is a little bit later in the draft. Round one, he's 21 as well. He's got A awareness, pass protector. Ooh, he's got a lot of A's. His physicals are not very good, though. Change of direction is good. Agility is better, better than average. Speed is average. To maybe a little below average I don't know strength not good at all but he has a awareness impact blocking and pass blocking that's somebody to keep an eye on I think I might add him to this list here yeah I think we're gonna go I want to know more about Sammy Griffin and I want to know more about Steven Briggs the D tackle and then I think what maybe we should do is try to find a tight end here because we need a tight end and we're not gonna get these guys unlocked given the track record we have right now with our scouts. So um, Kenny Yates, 6'4", 257. He's going to be a little bit earlier of a pick. He'd have to be like a very early pick. I don't know if that's going to go over well for us. But there's also always the option of trade down too. You know, if we don't like somebody where we're at and we're at like, you know, pick 18 or something like that, we could potentially trade down to the back end of the first, pick up a few extra picks, which would just help us out in the long run, and then take a guy like Kenny Yates maybe. He's 6'4", 257, 22 years old. He has a very good physical spread. Everything is great to good, great to good. Um, the only thing he's lacking in is jumping and strength, which you'd like to see jumping better, but everything else looks pretty good. Um, A's, he's got A to C in awareness, carrying, spectacular catch, catching. Where is his injury? B to D. So at least it's not a C to F, right? There's at least some hope there. He has Bs in catch and traffic and deep route running and medium. Okay, so this guy might actually be a rather good tight end. Okay, so something I just found out is I guess it's still bugged. So even though they don't show you most of the players on this on this all positions thing, um, if you if you change pages, it apparently only chooses like one of them when you go to the select option. So I would recommend that if you're gonna add players back out, add them to your favorites list and then go in here and then just select them all from this list. So we were gonna do uh, Kenny Yates, Sammy Griffin, and Steven Briggs. So we'll do that. 
There we go. Now all three of them are showing. When I did this before, it only showed Briggs because that was the page that I last switched to. So be careful that you're not skipping out on, on scouting players. So these are the three we're going to go with. And that will bring us to the Titans. Will Levis, the quarterback. Tony Pollard, the running back, along with Ty J. Spears. Wide receivers, they have Calvin Ridley, Elijah Moore, Tutu Atwell, Hunter Renfro, and Malik Washington and jo Jaquan Jackson. Wow. The tallest person is Calvin Ridley at 6'1", the only guy above six foot. Everybody else is 5'10 or shorter. Okay, so uh, speedy group, not a lot of height. <laughs> they have uh, Quanco though for that, 6'3", 238, along with Justin Elias. So a, a rookie, so they have two really good tight ends, 6'3", 241. But JC Latham, the starting left tackle, uh, Skaronski at left guard, Cushenberry in the middle. Okay, so the, definitely the left side of their line is the strongest. Um, the right side needs some work on defense. Sam Hubbard as the left end. Jeffrey Simmons, the big time Titans legend at right end. In the middle, Tavondre Sweat. On the outside, Harold Landry the third. Ernest Jones and Kenneth Murray in the middle. And then Devondre Campbell on the other side. Legereus Sneed leading the cornerback room along with Chidobe Awuzie, Roger McCreary in the slot, and then Jonathan Lindsay at their fourth corner spot, another rookie. Look, moving on to the safeties, look at this, another rookie, Larry Hendricks, 5'11", 221, and then Jamal Adams at the strong safety position. So this team has a few veterans and then a lot of guys trying to sort of pave their way. You know, somebody mentioned if medium pass is always the best option, and to this is what I say to that, right? I understand that you can switch things up, but what you have to look at in this in this realm here is you also you have to take into account the type of plays that your defense is going to call to know what you're going to be in most of the time. Because this doesn't essentially go off of the play calling of the defense or of the offense, right? Like if I choose medium pass, we don't get the extra coverage like don't pay attention too much to this to this this box down here like they will get some some help in the ratings department but it's it's more so based off of your play calling if you're in a defense that would call for medium pass you're going to get the boost regardless if they are in medium pass or not so the game doesn't exactly work how they say it does but medium pass is a lot of of commonly run concepts given the day and age in the NFL, which means a lot of playbooks are sort of geared towards it, which is why I will usually go with medium pass. You can get away with maybe a short pass, um, but then you're you're sort of going off of, you know, your cover twos type of look, you know, um, whereas the medium pass or deep pass is going to be more your cover threes, your cover fours. Inside run is going to be more your base set defense than anything else. So if you're going to try to have a boost there, that's what you're going to want to go with, which is why I usually default to medium pass. I mean, if you want, I mean, we could try deep pass and just see what happens this week. Maybe it'll give us a little bit better luck with cover four or cover three. Um, so we'll give it a shot. We'll see what they We'll see how it goes. And then same thing for the offense. This is going to give you, you know, it, and it, it actually tells you, it's sort of funny because they say it's, this is what you get out of it, but then it actually tells you the, the exact reason you get it. Improved run blocking, carrying, break tackle, stiff arm, and trucking when calling inside run plays. So obviously that, that works for the offense, but if you go back to the defense here and you look, it says when calling medium pass play counters. So it doesn't actually have anything to do with helping when the team is passing medium or middle or whatever. It's just giving you a boost in your ratings in those departments if you call a defense that is meant for that. So what I always tell people is if you really want to know exactly what it is, and maybe I'll do a video on this, um, I'm not sure yet, but I can find out exactly what gets improved week to week with the different, um, I did this a few years ago, but I don't know if it's changed or not yet, as to what exactly concepts are going to be improved by choosing each option. The medium pass always was the one that helped the most because it would give you a uh, cover three and a cover four and you know some of those other ones like cover six for the most part those usually are the ones that get called especially in passing situations 
and it would help you out quite a bit there which is why i usually go with medium pass but we're gonna give d pass a shot this week and then on offense i think throw at medium is actually a pretty good option we need to we need to get you know boyd a little bit more comfortable in the pocket so we're gonna just actually you know what they blitz a ton 38 percent zone blitz and then 20 man or four man man blitz so 42 percent of the time they're blitzing so we're gonna actually we're gonna run blitz counter this week i changed my mind and then for the goals we are gonna do yeah sack the quarterback i we need to get after will levis make him uncomfortable in the pocket um i actually am liking most of these we're gonna go 300 yards on offense and then here win turnover battle yeah, I think that would be a good one because we've had some slip ups lately with Deion Boyd when we watch the game. So let's let's just keep, stick with that one and hope we can we can hit it home. All right. And yes, I know I have a lot of franchise points and I've been saving them because it takes so gosh darn long to get these upgrades. So I wanted to get more than one at a time. So here what we're going to do is we are going to finally we're going to unlock the the sixth and final uh, focus player for for weekly training. And then what I would also like to do is we want to get start on our development here. So we already have this one done. We have to decide between these two, two-way tight end or road grader. Yeah, I feel like I would rather go with the linemen because they have a harder time upgrading than I would the tight ends and wide receivers because those guys will, they'll, they will just progress as they do. But the linemen are tougher. So I think we're gonna go and we're gonna un unlock this side here and get that stuff started. This will help XP gains for left and right guards. And this would be right left and right tackles. But first, we're going to also go over here and we're going to get this started for the defensive development. And that brings us down to 25 points, which now puts us in the area of not being able to upgrade anything else because everything is so expensive for me, which is by design, right? It is by design. So I'm not upset about it, but we have just unlocked a few new things. We have our head coach now all planned out for his development strategies, and we have all six focus players unlocked for the weekly training. And now we get to do the upgrades. We have quite a few upgrades to do because I have been holding on to these for the last couple of weeks. So Dion Boyd right off the bat, he is still an 87 overall strong arm. I'm trying to get his field general um, a little bit more closer so that way he can play like a field general as well those usually have the most success for the most part when it comes to the sim so we're going to continue to go with field general to see if that can get him up a little bit more closer to that he gets awareness deep accuracy middle accuracy short accuracy and throw on the run Deron overton our top receiver for the future he is going to continue to develop and i think after last week's upgrade, I'm still looking to get his catching and catching traffic up to be closer to his spectacular catch. Of course, I want his release up too. But because of that, I feel like we may want to go... I feel like physical might actually be a good play here. Catch and traffic, spectacular catch, and release. And I feel like that would be a good one. So we're going to go with this this week. So he goes physical... And he is going to get, ooh, six upgrades. Catch and traffic, short route, two to spec catch, stiff arm trucking, and an ability slot. So he is still hidden. He's glitched out at zero. But we now know that he is going to be at least a superstar, which means we have Dion Boyd, who is an X Factor, and we landed a potential superstar X. Well, we know it's a superstar at the very least, or potentially an X Factor at wide receiver in the same draft. That... That is awesome. So now we have, we know we have our receiver one of the future for sure on the roster. I'm excited. This is going to be good. Xavier Leggett also going to get an upgrade and we are going to do, what does he need? He needs short and medium route running and release. I feel like we're just going to go playmaker for him. He gets a ton of upgrades. Awareness, break, tackle, carrying, catching one, deep route three, medium one, release three, short one, and spectacular catch two. Trevin Wallace also getting an upgrade. And he is somebody that I think we need to really focus more on the coverage aspect a little bit. His tackling is good. Pursuit is good. Play recognition is pretty good. Yeah, I want to see his, his coverage ability come up a little bit. His man right now is better than his zone, and we want to get that up. So we're going to go pass coverage here for him. And he is going to get one play rec and three to zone. Perfect upgrade. 
Jacquez Green also going to get an upgrade. And I think we are still looking for, yes, we are still doing block shedding because this man needs some help there. So we're going to do block or run stopping for him. Two block, two hit power, and two play recognition. Dalvin really also getting an upgrade here. And I think we are going to go possession for him. Brings him up to a 75 overall. One to vision, two break tackle, impact, three to medium, one release, one short, and two to spectacular catch. He is back this week as well, so we'll get to see him again. I'm I'm praying that there's a way for me to get his injury up, but I just don't think it's possible. He's got a 76 injury and 79 toughness, so it's I don't even there's not even a way to upgrade that, which is, I think is fair to some degree. But I also think it could be something rolled in somewhere, right? Like there could be like a very rare upgrade where you get like if a player is, let's say, injury prone, right? Maybe the game like I, this is complicated, but if the game could get to a point where if a player goes a full season or maybe two seasons without an injury or something weird like that, they can get a boost to their injury which would be hard when they have low injury, right? But that's what also make sure that it's evened out. It's not just making everybody 99 injury. I don't know. It just sucks that you draft a player and there's no way to fix the fact that they're injury prone or they have low toughness when those are things that can be fixed, right? Like you, players can learn how to protect themselves better. Players can learn how to take hits better. Players can learn how to, to get their body in a better position to avoid injuries and setbacks once they reach the NFL level, because there's all of this, this investment into player health and longevity from the team standpoint. So I just feel like there could be something in there where you can upgrade these type of situations for players, even though they come in with a low grade. And out comes the Titans. Our first drive did not go very well. Turns out the turning throw away on for a quarterback does not fix them as we just witnessed. I have a suspicion. Oh, good play there. And it's out to the 30, a gain of seven. I do have my suspicions as to what may be causing it. I believe that it is actually caused by the, um, the archetype. We've seen this in the past where the strong arm archetype acts stupid in the pocket and they run around and they run backwards, which is also why I've been working at Field General to try to get it to overtake strong arm. Um, and I, I have a suspicion that might be the cause because everything else has turned to the point of it should not make them do that, but so far it has not mattered. There's a nice pass to from Levis, gain of nine. And as you play different quarterbacks, you will notice that field generals and scramblers and, and whatnot typically have a better awareness in the pocket when it comes to that stuff. Play action from Levis. Over the middle, it's completed to Ridley. And Ridley down inside the 35 to the 32. Right now, the Titans driving on us. Levis with time. Over the middle again completed. Down to the 16. And this is sort of one of the drawbacks sometimes to covering the deep pass, thinking you might get certain play calls. It just doesn't always come to fruition. Levis now underneath again, and they are tearing us up. It's a touchdown. It's Elias, the rookie tight end, who looks like a running back out there the way he's, he's <laughs> like his number and everything. But it's Justin Elias getting in the end zone for the Titans on their opening drive, and they are going to take an early 6 to nothing lead. So as you guys can imagine, I'm mentioning that because on the last drive, Deion Boyd ran 15 yards behind the line of scrimmage and took another sack. So I don't know if we're going to be able to get him out of this rut until we change his archetype. But I am working on it. As Overton makes the first catch of his day, he'll get six yards on a little screen route there, a little bubble screen. But essentially, we need to get plays where Boyd is more comfortable delivering the ball quickly. And I am working on it, by the way. There we go. Nice quick pass to Peoples-Jones. I am working on a playbook for this franchise. I'm going to be doing a modified version of the Green Bay Packers playbook because I really like a lot of the formations when it comes to the shotgun for four and five receiver sets. Oh, another quick pass. Oh, an Overton turning up field, weaving through traffic all the way down to the 31. 
And now it's going to be on Theo Judge coming in. I formation. I have decided to let Judge and uh, Strong share. Oh, looking deep. He's got him. And it's Peoples Jones down to the six, right on the sideline, getting his feet down, working against Legarius Sneed. We got ourselves set up here pretty nicely. First and goal. We're spreading them out thin. Five receiver set. Boyd, quick pass, end zone, touchdown, it's Duran Overton. And we will strike back. The first drive did not go our way, but we come back swinging. And we're gonna tie it up. Levis and company coming back out. They had a very good opening drive. Moving the ball without issue down the field. I formation, Pollard in the backfield. Play action. Shot over the middle, it's incomplete. Looking for Ridley, we had Simmons in coverage along with Horn, and they break it up. Single back look here. Another quick pass outside, it's completed, but Stevens does an excellent job of closing quickly, not falling for the little rub route from the inside to knock him off his game and brings him down after two. Third and eight coming up here. Levis under pressure immediately goes down. Clowney runs right past the, the running back. I don't know what he was thinking. And we're going to get ourselves a very quick defensive stop thanks to Jadavian Clowney. All right, back on offense. Four receivers set to start this drive. And we're going to do a little play action. Boyd fires it over the middle right to the defender. No hesitation on the part of Deion Boyd. He just is like, hey, 56, you want this? Here you go, bud. Just fired it in there. It looked as if he thought he was going to keep running, but Murray stops in his tracks, turns back, and had the awareness to know the ball was coming. And just like that, the stop we get on the Titans does not prove to be helpful in any way as they'll start now in our own territory behind the back catch for Ridley gets a first down they're inside the 40 little route uh, uh, route geez obviously it's a route the <laughs> screen ran to the right side does not go for anything defense doing a good job staying up on their receiver expecting screens handoff and that will go nowhere. Gain of one. Not a lot of running today by either side. I actually have yet to see a run on either side. Well, except for that one. That was the first run of the day for either team. Well, Levis underneath Ridley again, open on the hitch route. And we are letting Levis look like a professional out here. Here we go, first and 10 to open up the second quarter. I formation, they're gonna do a little pitch play and nowhere to go. Shut down pretty early on. So a good stop by the defense, second and 10. Blitz coming, Levis under pressure and he's gonna throw it away. Third and 10, now they need the 14. Levis has time, fires to the end zone, it's picked off! And it's Fuller! He's gonna take it out to the 10. Both quarterbacks trying to take shots, trying to, to trick the defenders. So far, it's not working. Defense gets its first turnover. So that interception fell short of, of getting us anything. We ended up taking two sacks, not actually Boyd's fault either. It was just, it was good play design. They got pressure immediately. There was nowhere he could go. And there was just too much ground to make up. So we had to punt it back. And now Tennessee again with the ball, hand it off and it's gonna go nowhere. Trevin Wallace on the stop, no gain. And now they're gonna go empty set on second. Ridley in motion. And they're gonna go for, oh my God, what a play by Horn. J.C. Horn, I thought he was gonna pick that off for a second. He read that beautifully. He knew that was coming. 
Third and 14. Lavis over the middle, and it is caught. Runs the needle to 2-2 two -two Atwell, and it's going to get him across midfield. Of course, the first down, he was working against Brandon Stevens. Just an excellent play, a good throw by Levis. And now Tennessee starting to get into field goal range here. Levis another shot, and oh, a big hit. And I believe that was Wallace covering Elias. Forces that incompletion. And now they're going to go empty set again. We are sending heat. But he's able to get rid of it to Elias again. It's going to be a gain of six. Levis relying on the rookie tight end quite a bit today. We haven't seen him target a Quanquo at all. Maybe there's an injury that I was not aware of. I think there actually is. Oh, Levis pushed out. He's going to run with it. And he's got enough for the first. Down to the 30. Oh, apparently I'm an idiot and missed the injury on a Quanquo because it's been Elias all day. And I do not see him in the lineup. Levis with time. Throws it short to an open Atwell who cannot keep his footing and steps out of bounds after four. Had the opportunity to get another 10 yards, it looked like, but he just threw it maybe a little bit too late. Atwell, you know, maybe thought he was a little bit farther in field than he was. Regardless, it's a gain of four over the middle to Elias, who takes a shot from Wallace. It's going to be marked just shy, third and one. And they don't care. They're going to stick in the shotgun. we got to be ready for this little inside draw here, inside zone. And that's exactly what they do, and we are not ready for it. Thompson puts the hit on him, but not before he gets the first. Tennessee with a fresh set now in the red zone. First time they've been down here since their opening drive. Back to pass. Levis again underneath. He's got Pollard down to the seven. Nice gain and another first down. Taking a lot of time off of this court, the second quarter clock here. Levis underneath again, and Ridley gets in. Touchdown, Tennessee. The hitch routes have been getting us lately. We don't seem to be playing up aggressively enough on them, and right, right there it pays it pays off for Tennessee. All right, first and 10. Boyd takes a big drop back underneath, finds Overton. There was a defender right there, brings him down after just a yard. 2.40 to go in this first half. We have three timeouts. So does Tennessee. Blitz coming. It's picked up initially. Boyd has time. Fires it downfield. He finds Overton. And he is gone. Touchdown, Carolina. What a throw. Right over the top of the defender. And Overton making big plays today. His second touchdown. And this is why I wanted to put him as the number two receiver. Tied up 14 again. Levis underneath, finds Elias, and he's gonna have a first down. There's plenty of time on this clock for things to still happen before the end of this break. That'll bring us to the two minute warning here. Both offenses have been able to move the ball consistently. Oh, calling an audible here. What does he see? Sort of flip the play around. Levis under pressure immediately is able to get rid of it to Elias again. And Justin Elias has been proven to be quite the playmaker for the Titans today. Play action, quick pass outside, and it's incomplete. But not keep his feet in bounds. Gonna bring up third and two. Levis un underneath again, and Ridley turning on the defender. It's battle getting outplayed on the outside. It leads to a huge gain and is going to put Tennessee in scoring territory again. I mean, he just got he just got outplayed there for sure. That, that's rough to see. Young corner, hopefully he's going to get better. Obviously, he will get better over the next year or so, but yeah, you got to be ready for that stuff. Levis. 
A shot to the corner, another completion. Atwell, a very similar route to what Overton just had the touchdown on, to the opposite side, of course. But regardless, Levis looking very sharp today. This offense has been humming. And, oh, just outside of the outstretched arms. I'm not sure who that was. Looks like a running back. Second and goal. We send Heat. We get through, and Levis has to throw it away. Third and goal now. Holding him to a field goal here would be pretty clutch. Back to pass. Under pressure. Let's it go. And we will not do that because they say his feet are down. It's Tony Pollard. Oh, man. I really thought we would be able to stop him. But it looks like both feet down. One, two. Yep. Clean catch. Touchdown, Tennessee. And we just cannot stop them from continuing to add to their, their total and keeping us at bay with these seven-point leads. It's up and good. 21-14. All right, we come back after the break. Still 21-14. And Levis today has looked very, very good. I stated this before, just before. And a lot of that has to do with, really, Justin Elias. He has been coming through in the clutch on quite a few plays for them, keeping their drives alive, giving them another opportunity in the wake of a Quanquo's injury. As they come out here at the 27, Levis underneath again. They've been killing us there, and Atwell using his speed to get up across the 40 to the 42. Another first down. Tennessee has been able to throw it at will today. Another pass for Levis underneath. Battle that time was almost there in time to either break it up or get the pick, but he was just a step behind, allowing Ridley to make the catch and once again extend the drive. The Titans just taking chunks out of us. And it was Spears' is number two. I kept getting those guys confused. So they both are wearing long arm tape and everything. So Spears is the starter somehow, and, and Pollard is not. Okay. Spears in the backfield, second and two. Oh, what a play by Wallace. Thompson comes in to clean up, but that's Trevin Wallace right there. Getting through that gap, not allowing him to even consider where he wanted to go with the ball. That's a big time stop. If we can get another stop here, we might have ourselves a good defensive drive. Levis back over the middle. It's incomplete. And now it's decision time for Tennessee. Oh, and that decision is to go for it. I was actually between field goal and punting, but they decided they just want to go for it. Levis, over the middle, they got it again on the underneath route to Atwell, and it's a first down. You have to be ready for those kind of route concepts in those kind of situations, and we were just not prepared whatsoever. Hand off now, and nothing to be had there. Second and nine. Wallace once again on the stop. I'm not a fan of why this week we have not passed the ball or ran the ball at all on offense. I've, I'm not really sure what's going on there. I mean, we've been consistent on offense, right, which is good. But this is partly why I want to have an actual good playbook. I, last year, I, I refused to do it because I didn't want to be unfair to the defense. But I'm also sick of not having a good story for our running game. So I'm just going to do what I want. And we are going to have a custom book. I'm going to make sure it's set up properly to where we get good plays all around as we finally get a stop there thanks to Tremont Battle. And we'll force the field goal in the end. Tennessee, with this one, will make it a 10-point game. Here we go, coming onto the field. It's been a back-and-forth day, but the Titans have definitely had the upper hand for the most part. And now, because of it, we find ourselves down 10. They worked the clock perfectly in the, in the first half, which allowed them to sort of get a jump start on us trying to tie the game up again. We start with an incomplete pass. We need Boyd to do something here, though. We need, a, we need an offensive drive to get us back on the board and get some momentum back in our favor. And that is not... Oh, okay, never mind. I thought that was hitting the turf. 
Good job by Boyd getting it to the receiver. I didn't think there was anybody down there. I take my words back that I was about to say. Third and three, though. What do we got here? Quick snap, quick drop back. Boyd going to run it first time today. And he gets the first down to the 39. He doesn't run it much. But when he does, it's usually pretty effective. Quick. Oh, wow. He got rid of that just in time. And Peoples-Jones doing God's work, carrying the defenders across the first down marker. They sent the heat, and Boyd immediately recognized it, threw it right to where the blitz came from, found an open Peoples-Jones. And another play action. Boyd under pressure. You got to do something, man. You can't just stand there. Damn it, man. Four sacks today. We have not been able to get any pressure. The Titans, I, I mean, the first few were definitely not on, or the, no, I shouldn't say, two of them have been on Boyd. Two of them have been good defense. This one is on Boyd, though. You have to do something with the ball. You know, like, if you're going to try to pull it down and run it, you got to do it before there's three defenders facing you and there's no blue jerseys in between you and them. And if you're that far outside of the pocket, throw the damn thing away. Second and 19. Boyd, again. Oh, my God. We keep having these drives where it just seems like we can't get a positive yard to save our life. That one is not on Boyd, though. That is on who I expect to be our franchise left tackle. I, Boyd did drop back a little bit too far, but there was not enough time there for anything to develop. Uh, you've got to be shitting me. Holy cow. Third and 34. This seems, you know, easily enough to, to convert, right? Of course, they are going to send heat. And it's caught. Overton, he gets the first. Oh, my God. No, he's not hurt. No, he's not hurt. God damn it, guys. One, two steps forward and 37 back. We get a huge conversion. And now Boy, or, uh, Overton gets injured on the play. Mingo with the catch. We get a first. I mean, that was a hell of a play, though. I don't want to. I don't want to overshadow that. That was an incredible play from both Boyd and Overton. Thirty-five yards is what we got. Oh, that was a hell of a play by Adams there. He dove Superman style to break that one up. I swear to God, it better not be a long-term injury. Get back in this damn. That's this damn game, dude. I don't even care. Yeah, I'm, I'm saying random things. I don't even care. Judge with the carry gets nothing. That's literally his second second or third carry of the day. Like, I don't know. I don't know. No running whatsoever for us today. Another blitz from Tennessee. We pick it up. Boyd's got time, and it is completed. Peoples-Jones. This is what I wanted to see out of him when we brought him on board. We have saw flashes. We've not seen consistency. Today, he has been all over the field, making incredible catches. First and 10, handoff, getting outside. Judge with plenty of space, an easy walk-in touchdown. Haven't had a lot of runs today, but Judge still gets himself a touchdown, and we're going to make it a three-point game again. Tennessee back on offense. First and 10, nearing the end of this third quarter. They're going to hand it off now. And that one was to Pollard. He'll get three yards. Brown on the stop. 24-21. And the Titans go right back to what was working. Underneath routes. This one to Elias. Gets them close to the first down. Now they'll come out in the I formation. We don't see this too often. Out of them, anyway. Hand off. Pollard. Oh, he breaks past. We had him stopped, and Wallace can't make the tackle. Damn it. Those are the plays we need the defense to make. You can't lose a one-on-one -on -one to Tony Pollard in the backfield when you have him wrapped up. That's unfortunate. 
Blitz coming. We get through, but not in time. He delivers it to Ridley, and he's wide open down the seam and inside the 30. Regardless, the defense has just not really been helping us. And now they're going to... They have control of the ball. They have the lead. They can continuously make it a two-score lead if they continue to get in the end zone at this point. And now at this point, I would say they start running the ball, you would think, to run this clock down, not give us a lot of time, wear our defense out. And Levis is, oh my God. We fell for that hard. There wasn't a soul over there except the safety. Levis under center. Play action. Gonna run it again. He can't get away. And we finally get our second sack. It's Clowney again. He's had both of them today. Pushing him back to the 11. Elias in motion. Levis, a quick pass underneath to him. And Wallace was in the area potentially for an interception, but he decides to play the receiver. Knocks it loose. Third and goal. Good play there. Levis with time over the middle. It's an easy touchdown. Easy touchdown. Wow. There's Elijah Moore on the catch. And he is in. Tennessee retakes this 10-point lead. So both teams ended up punting. Still a 10-point game. We have five minutes to go. Boyd takes a snap. He just gets rid of it to Judge. And yeah, we got nothing. We got a loss of one. Pressure was there immediately. They counted that as a run. Oh, I guess he threw it behind him. Um, it, today has been a very weird day. Uh, the defense for both teams has struggled with the pass. But as of late, this second half, the Titans definitely took a different approach and have been getting a lot of pressure on us. Overton is back. He, was, he did return on the last drive, so that's good. We know it's not a serious injury. But we are struggling right now. We need some plays, and we need them fast. Mingo in motion. Boyd. Do something with it, Boyd. You got to throw it, Boyd. Finally throws it. And it's completed to Duran Overton. 10 catches, 198 yards for the rookie wide receiver. Not to mention two touchdowns. And any time that you can have 12 seconds to throw the ball, somebody is going to be open. And that is not even something on the secondary. That is solely on the pass rush there. And I am forever grateful for it because it gave us a huge play. But we need to continue it. We can't have these one chunk plays and then take three sacks. You know, that's sort of what happened the last drive or two. Like that, right there. Exactly that. I, I shouldn't have said it. Another play action. Boyd, please, man, please. Okay, he throws it deep, and it's, oh, it's dropped. Peoples-Jones has come up with some amazing catches today, but there in double coverage with immediate contact. He just could not contain it. Third and 16 now. Boyd over the middle. It's completed to Ridley, and he's down to the 40, and I feel like we have to go for it at this point. Yeah, we are. We're going to go for it. Fourth and three. I mean, yes, we need a, tie, a, tie, uh, a field goal, too, but... Okay, thank God. I thought he was going to get stopped. Judge gets the first. I don't know why they're booing. We just got a first. That doesn't make any goddamn sense. This is a home crowd. Come on, Madden. Get it right. Boyd's going to run it. He's got space. 20, 15, 10. He slides down. Big run from Boyd. Play action, under pressure immediately, and oh my, dude, every time, every time we end up getting something good happening for us, this crap happens without fail. What in the hell is going on? Jesus. Like... The last three or four drives, every time we get a good play, we get sacked. Come on, man. Holy shit, that was caught. I thought that was a throwaway, but it's not. The defense and Peoples-Jones, they just stood there and waited for the ball to get there and like, here, Mr. Peoples-Jones, just hold on to this for me. I'm gonna gently tackle you down. Hats off to Boyd on that play because he found him open across the field, gave him a shot, and we get a touchdown. The question is, is it too little, too late? 
with a minute 27 left we're gonna make this a three-point game there it is we are going for the onside kick it's pushed up and it's complete and it's got yeah titans got it damn it that looks horrible by the way we didn't have anybody over there the ball didn't bounce high enough i appreciate the effort though but now i mean tennessee is already knocking on the on the on field goal range you know like we do have three timeouts so if we can get some stops here we could be in business with something but this defense has not been able to really consistently stop this offense from getting at least a first down or two on a drive all day so now it's down to are we even going to see it or not hand off and no we're not we're just gonna we're just gonna let him run it for 20 yards oh my god well we had a chance yeah damn man that that, <laughs> that just that really pissed me off oh man oh man yeah and underneath the whoever that guy is second and four we have one timeout left i mean tennessee can pretty much get this thing down to under 30 seconds easily even if we stop him here oh my god you need to catch that the idiot gives us a, a gives us a gift on a silver platter and we drop it that was our only chance right there we get, we can't tackle okay so we the the titans got screwed they have to kick a field goal and we somehow save a timeout because of an injury to a titan and an incomplete pass so apparently the madden gods does not want this game to end it's a six point game with a minute left oh well, there you see boyd career day 412 yards three touchdowns 26 of 35 he does have an interception as well but overall it's been like that for both sides and now we somehow find ourselves with the ball at a timeout in 58 seconds but we need a touchdown boyd's gonna run completely backwards for 20 yards perfect luckily it bounces on the turf and it does not count as a completion and we need something uh pretty substantial here to happen here soon Boyd, oh he's heaving it deep downfield this one-on-one -on -one, and it's batted down it was people's jones awuzie had the sort of the over the top coverage protection against the ball he just sort of shield him a little bit from getting there makes a play on it good job of the defender overton in motion boyd is gonna just immediately run it okay he fumbled it you've got it. okay wow Oh, this clock stopped, so I'm happy with that. First and ten. I've never seen that play before, but that was like a designed run. All right, he's calling an audible here. Flip sides here. What are we going to do? Boyd fires it right side, almost throws an interception. So when, when we throw hitches, right, the defenders jump it. When they throw hitches, we're five yards behind the receiver. Got it. Okay. Good to know. Blitz coming. And he finds Mingo over the middle. It's completed down to the 44. We're going to use our last timeout. Boyd with the snap. He's under pressure again. He's able to get rid of it, but it's short. What a stupid play. This is pretty much our last opportunity here, Boyd. Okay, he throws it away. Now, now you can throw it away. Now you can throw it away. Okay. It's like it's like this game is playing tricks on me. Last play. Boy, just heaving it up. We got got for this last week, but we don't get it this week. And then we are going to fall back to five hundred and six and six. The Titans. We give Will Levis a career day. They gave Dion Boyd a career day, and it ends up being a shootout that we fall short in. All right, now let's take a look at the stats for the team. Since we lost, we can at least see if we had some good stats. We know Boyd did 433 yards, three touchdowns, one interception, but he took eight sacks and it's just, it's getting to be a lot. You know, it seems to be becoming more and more prevalent as we go along in the season. 
hopefully we find a way to alleviate that with the custom book that i am working on it's going to take me some time because those do take some time to critique possibly for cpu play um on the rushing side of things boyd also led us there five for 64 we did not run the ball much at all we actually purposely ran the ball three times and then it was a throw that counted as a run because it was thrown behind the line so horrible day for play calling there but another big bright spot is deron overton career day 10 catches 198 yards and two touchdowns absolutely incredible to see uh donovan people's jones though i don't want it to be overshadowed he had a huge day as well seven for 111 and a touchdown he was making so many clutch plays and catches for us i don't want to forget that trevin wallace was all over the field for us um in certain situations other times you know it just seemed like the entire defense just did not want to be there uh clowny the only guy that well no we had three sacks Wanham got the, the third but clowny was the main focal point when it came to getting pressure and then we had jordan fuller again back-to-back -back games where he has made some incredible plays for us getting the interception early on in the game did not amount to anything but Nonetheless, a good play by the defense on a day where we're just looking for any type of positives. You know, th these kind of games and how things are playing is exactly why I'm sort of on the fence about what I want to do moving forward with this with this particular season. Part of me is concerned that if we can't keep up with a team like this, how do we expect to keep up with better teams? You know, Dallas, Detroit, Green Bay, Seattle, uh, Atlanta, you know, Tampa Bay, we, our own teams. Like, we, we, we have a lot of good teams in this division, and we are struggling against some of the, the worst teams in the in the AFC. So it's it's a very, I don't know. I'm not quite sure what I want to do, but right now I'm just not feeling that this season is going to be something we're going to remember. And um, I don't know. Let me know what you guys think down below. Do we keep playing this season? Do we keep going through these motions? or do we, I feel like we have a pretty good grasp on who we have on this team. And what we need to replace and what we need to do by books wise you know scheme wise and all that stuff and i, I want to get to it it's just going to take some time of course like i mentioned with getting the playbooks right but i have a feeling that i can get this team playing properly but we need some more people we need some more development out of these young guys so let me know what you guys think of that down below do we try to expedite this season just accepting that we are not ready to take on the nfl playoffs or do we keep riding it out and see what happens? Because if so, I mean, we're in week 13. We wouldn't have to really do that much simming to get to the end of the year and see where we end up. But right now, things are looking bleak for us and what we're able to accomplish. So with that being said, that's all I have for you guys. Thank you so much for watching. If you stayed this long, please consider hitting that like button. It helps tremendously. Subscribing if you've not already. I know there's a few of you that watch but don't subscribe. And hey, it's free. And I'd appreciate it a lot. Also hit that bell notification so you know when these videos come out and I will see you guys next time. Okay.